Holy moly. Good morning. Thank you for the lovely introduction, President Chop. Let me highlight a few points. One, I am the world authority on Vibrio harvii, an obscure, glow-in-the-dark marine bacterium. Two, <laughs> I care deeply, very deeply, about whether or not bacteria, primitive, single-celled, brainless organisms can talk to one another. Three, I have spent 20 years deciphering bacterial languages. I've cooked up strategies to make bacteria speechless, flustered, and confused. I am the bacteria whisperer. <laughs> and to top it off, I think this is a perfectly reasonable and responsible way to make a living. <laughs> My lab wants to understand how bacteria communicate with one another, to invent strategies to interfere with their communications, and to use that knowledge to make new antibiotics. Our hope is to save millions of people from dying each year from infectious diseases. The clinical use of antibiotics began 60 years ago. Our well-being and our life expectancy improved dramatically. The world thought the bacterial problem was solved. But over the years, bacterial infections that were once easily treatable have become resistant to all available antibiotics. No new antibiotics have been developed in the past 30 years. That's one human generation, but about one million bacterial generations. Bacteria have enormous evolutionary advantage over us. You'd think we don't stand a chance. Nonetheless, I am completely optimistic. Why? Because my lab and others have brought a new way of thinking to the problem. Rather than killing the bacteria in an infection, we are knocking out their lines of communication, their command and control. If the bacteria can't talk to one another, they can't coordinate their attack, and the body's defenses can win and this strategy is working. <laughs> when I was sitting where you're sitting today at UC Davis, I never believed I could take on such challenges. I had then, and I have today, an internal critic repeating, you can't do it, you will fail. That inside voice drones on and on, but my outside life, my real life, happily is utterly different. I live a life of discovery and passionate curiosity about how the world works. I run to lab every day to find out what amazing secrets my gang has uncovered and to think about how our findings can apply to human health. Beyond the lab, I influence policymakers to ensure that we live healthy lives and that the public understands the promise of science. I have a really good life. People listen to me. <laughs> Somehow, that surprises me because I still struggle with the feeling that I just don't measure up. Early on, I had mentors who encouraged me. Although I didn't believe in myself, I thought, well, heck, they believe in me, so maybe this will turn out okay. Now, I trust the young scientists in my group. So again, I figure this is going to work out. On the national stage, my heroes are now my colleagues, and I think, okay, they want me here. In the end, the people surrounding me and the, worthinesses of the, the worthiness of the causes we pursue keep me from backing down. Through time, I've also gotten better at turning down the volume of my internal critic. By now, I know this negative voice is never going away. More importantly, I found some benefit to this nagging voice. That voice keeps me from thinking too much of myself when delightful things happen, like receiving an honorary degree from Swarthmore. That voice keeps me critical of my science, so I and my group can remain intellectually honest. That voice especially gives me empathy for young people. It reminds me that they might not yet believe in themselves. Hopefully, that pesky voice makes me a more compassionate mentor of my students and a more worthy steward of the nation's scientific future. Perhaps some of you have an internal voice like mine. Perhaps some of you have a different way to overcome your fears. Whatever method works for you, I hope through time you find balance between taming your internal fears when they seem overwhelming and exploiting those fears to give you a winning blend of humility and self-confidence. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your celebration. A huge and heartfelt congratulations. <laughs> 